Thanks for being here. I'm Joe Esposito. Some of you know me, some of you don't. How many people listen on the radio? That's what I look like. Sorry. <laughs> so, this is it. <laughs> Do I sound shorter? Who says I sound short? I sound shorter, don't I? I don't know why. Who says I sound short? So anyway, thanks for being here tonight. It's February. So we're going to talk about the food romance connection and how it affects your hormones and your hormones on all aspects, including romance. Are no children here? Good. Okay. We can talk a little higher. So, so I was going to talk about today is the food romance hormone connection. It's kind of important. Uh, real quickly, my background, in case you don't know, I have, I have five board certifications. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management. I'm board certified in nutrition. I have a BS in clinical nutrition. Um, been in practice almost 30 years now. Three when I started. Yeah. Only women lie about their age, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is a fun, this is a fun lecture. This is one of the lectures I really enjoy doing. So it's kind of a little tongue in cheek, but it, it really it's going to hit home because everybody here is being affected by this, and you don't know it. And by the end of tonight, within an hour, you're going to go, oh, that's why I can't. Well, that's why I have to. And it's going to answer those questions for you. Okay, so it's a lot of fun. So, and we have the pesto tonight, which is Lori's favorite meal of all the year to make. So you're going to love the sun-dried tomato basil pesto. Easy to make, very inexpensive, and a wonderful romantic dinner. And one of the reasons is because it's raw. And we eat raw food has enzymes in it. Your body needs enzymes. Every cell in your body needs enzymes to function. And as soon as you cook something above 110 degrees, whether it's a steak or a carrot, the enzymes are destroyed. Okay, so you need those enzymes. So the raw food is going to make a big difference in your life on all aspects, especially hormones. So, let's talk about what you might consider a romantic dinner, all right? We're going to go out for a romantic dinner, and we're going to go out for a typical American diet. And that might be, I don't know, steak and lobster, okay, baked potato, sour cream, butter, cheesecake, coffee, wine. It's not a good meal, doesn't it? It might taste good. Let's talk about what that does to you, what the food you're eating is doing to your hormones. First of all, number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. Number two consumer, digestion. Now most of us digest every single day. I don't know about your life, but most people don't. Have romance all day, every day, okay? <laughs> and so it uses a lot of energy, and romance and digestion. So if we want to save a little energy, we gotta save, we gotta cut, cut back on our digestion. Now, again, digestion is hard to do. So we're gonna have a piece of meat. Commercial meat, we're gonna go out to the grocery store, buy a commercial piece of meat. Chances are it's loaded with steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, and tranquilizers. A lot of those hormones they put in there are called estrogen hormones or estrogen-like hormones. There's two major hormones in your body, two major hormone groups, I should say, estrogen and testosterone. Testosterone is your male hormone. It's your muscle-building hormone. It's your sex drive hormone. So testosterone is necessary for romance. Okay, low testosterone, a lot of romance in your life. But it's not just that. What if, not only this muscle, what about your heart? What about your colon? What about your blood vessels? These are all muscles as well, and they need testosterone to function normally. See so far? Estrogen does the opposite. It counteracts testosterone. Estrogen is what we would call the more female hormone. One of the things that estrogen does is cause you to lay down fat. Fat causes you to produce estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. Get it? See the cycle? This is one of the reasons why women have a harder time losing weight than men. Women are more estrogen dominant. And so estrogen can cause you to gain weight. Interesting. And so for women, it's a little harder. But once you lose the weight, then you're okay. We'll teach you how to do that. Before I came here tonight, I had a patient, young girl, a softball player, has knee problems, but she squats all day. She has shoulder problems from throwing. She's overweight. And her father said she eats really, really, really well. Now, one of two things. One is she is, and it's something else going on. Or two, she's lying. Okay? <laughs> I know, no woman's ever lied to me, so that would be first. So, she's overweight. And so I said, it might not be your food. It can be chemicals outside of your food that's causing you to gain weight. Shampoo, deodorants, perfumes, new car smell air fresheners, candles. What? These have endocrine disrupting hormones in them. Parabens and other endocrine disrupting hormones and they act as estrogen like compounds. So it acts as if it's estrogen inside your body. Some of them 300 times stronger than human estrogen. Microwave ovens. 
You take plastic, put it in the microwave oven, xenoestrogens are created. Xeno means foreign, estrogen means estrogen. It's a foreign estrogen up to 300 times stronger than human estrogen. So you're trying to lose weight, so you go out and buy this diet meal, frozen, in plastic, pop it in the microwave, and you're eating essentially estrogen. Because you gain weight. It doesn't make any sense, right? So when I was a kid, and that was a long time ago, when I was a kid, we didn't have all these chemicals and hormones and steroids and antibiotics that were being exposed to every single day. We have microwave ovens. And now what's happening, microwave ovens could be causing you to gain weight. How freaky is that? Okay, with me? So we gotta look at these things and say, wow, this is something I have to look at aside from food that can be affecting my romance. I mean, we have a romantic dinner. We go home and I light candles that smell like potpourri. What am I doing? Knocking my testosterone level down. How stupid is that? Then I'm eating a piece of meat loaded with estrogen-like compounds. What am I doing? Crushing my testosterone. Meat is very, very hard to digest. I want to save my energy, right? We talked about romance. I want to save my energy. I'm using it trying to break down that steak I just spent a whole lot of money on. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Saturated fats in the steak. You have saturated fats in the steak. When they get into your blood system, they clump up your red blood cells. The red blood cells clump together. They can't carry oxygen. You think oxygen is important? Yeah. <laughs> Romance? <laughs> Breathing? <laughs> so you need that. So saturated fats, dairy products and meats are clumping your red blood cells together. Wow. And it takes a lot of energy to digest the meat, and the meat gets into your small intestine. It's not broken down properly, and it rots. <clears throat> and when it rots, it causes gas. Not romantic. Okay? <laughs> So the meat is going to cause a lot of problems in your body. Okay? And you ever do this? Try this. Go home tonight if you have meat in your freezer and unplug your freezer. Don't really do this. Okay? <laughs> unplug your freezer, leave the freezer door sealed. Now your freezer's sealed, right? Nothing gets in or out. It's airtight. Right? And you have meat in your freezer, leave it there for three days. Come back and open your freezer door. What happened to the meat? Rot it. It stinks. But you're not going to be alone in the room. You're going to have visitors. What's in your freezer? Maggots. Maggots. Okay, crawling around in the meat. Now you told me your freezer sealed, right? And you said nothing gets in or out, right? Where do maggots come from? They're in the meat! And you eat the meat! Why you do that? <laughs> now I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Whoa. But you're thinking to yourself, but I cooked meat. So then you have cooked maggots. <laughs> Crispy maggot. Teriyaki maggot. Barbecued maggot. Huh? More protein. More protein. Actually, sadly enough, the maggots probably the healthiest part of the meat, sadly enough. So. so meat may not be the most romantic food for you to eat. Breaking a sweat there, thinking about it. <laughs> So meat may not be the best thing for you hormone-wise, especially because when I was a kid, meat with cows were fed grass, chickens were fed grain. Now they're fed soybeans. Soybeans are high in estrogen-like compounds called phytoestrogens. Corn. Where do we get high fructose corn syrup from? Corn. We we'll talk about high fructose corn syrup in a second. So the cows are getting fat. We're feeding them things to make them fat. Grass doesn't make them as fat as giving them estrogen-like compounds, phytoestrogens, and high fructose corn syrup. So why do we feed them that? Now you're eating that. Concentrated in their fat cells. Not a good thing, is it? So if you're going to eat meat, don't. <laughs> but if you do, don't. But if you still do, <laughs> I'm going to suggest you do organic meat. Now, I have not had any animal products in 26 years. Okay? If you knew what I knew, you would do what I do. Now, I'm not asking you to give up your meat. I'm giving you information and you can make decisions. But if you are going to eat meat, I beg of you, I'm on my knees begging you, please only do organic. Okay? But you say, well, organic is more expensive. Good. And it goes by to spend it on something else. Dairy products. We have cheese. Cheesecake. Okay? I would say that for later. Say dairy products for later. What's next on my list? I had meat as the top one, didn't I? Baked potato. All right, let's talk about baked potato. Now, baked potato can be good. We ever go to a fancy restaurant and potatoes are that big? Oh, yeah. <laughs> God didn't make potatoes that big. 
Something's wrong with mutant potatoes. <laughs> and also, potatoes live in the ground. And so if the soil is being sprayed with pesticides and, her and herbicides and chemicals to kill bugs, guess what? The potato absorbs that into the skin. So if you've got to eat tubes, uh, tubers or anything that grows in the ground, I strongly advise we do organic again. This way you can eat the skin. Pretty cool. So the potato is not so bad. Potato is a carbohydrate. You need some carbohydrates to produce a chemical called serotonin. Serotonin helps you relax. And then when it comes to romance and hormones, it's very important to be relaxed. Okay? There's two types of nerves in your body. One speeds you up, one slows you down. One is called sympathetic, one's called parasympathetic. Sympathetic speeds you up, parasympathetic slow you down. Serotonin helps slow you down. Relax. Romance is a parasympathetic function. You can't be in a sympathetic mode and function romantically. Thus, I'm too stressed out. Stress is what? A sympathetic function and shift, shift down to parasympathetic. So parasympathetics, have, you have to be in that mode to function normally. And so what you eat, a lot of work. Digestion is a parasympathetic function. Romance is a parasympathetic function. Stress, exercise, sympathetic function. You have to be able to shift back and forth. I'm gonna cover nervous system in a minute because that's really the most important part of the lecture. So, we're gonna have a potato, let's assume it's okay. Let's assume it's not sprayed with pesticides and bug killers. What are we gonna put on it? Butter, sour cream. Which George Carlin said, how do you know if sour cream goes bad? <laughs> You'll get that later. <laughs> Butter. When I was a kid, cows fed grass. Remember, uh, anybody old enough to remember milk that used to have cream on the top? Remember that? Milk man would come at 4 o'clock in the morning, bang things together. And milk had something else. What was it? Flavor, that's right. It had flavor. <laughs> Remember, cow, sometimes it tastes like grass, sometimes it tastes like onions, because it depends on what the cows eat. Now the cows eat the same thing all day, all year, every year. And so the milk is homogenous, it has the same flavor, and nutritional value plummets. And then we pasteurize the milk. When you pasteurize it, you change the molecular structure of something called casein. And when casein changes molecular structure, you can't digest it. Even if you could digest it, you want to use an enzyme called renin. Renin is an enzyme that breaks down casein so you can digest it. Well, we're humans. We don't produce renin. Baby cows produce renin. Humans don't. So now we want to take milk. We want to make something called cheese. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Well, if we can't break down the casein and make it into a cheese, we have to add renin. Where do we get renin from? I just said. Where do we get from? Yeah. Baby cow stomachs. So many times when you're eating cheese, you're saying, well, I don't eat meat, but I'll eat cheese. Where they're getting the renin from is they're scraping out the guts and the insides of the baby dead cow stomach and they're adding it to the milk to make the cheese. <laughs> so if the chemicals don't get you, the disgust factor will. Okay? Cheese saturated fats clumps your red blood cells together. Some of you are thinking right now, Dr. Joe, I cannot give up cheese. Anybody think that? Raise your hands. Be honest. Okay. Our time. Okay. Let me tell you why you can't give up cheese. You can't give up cheese because cheese has a, a dairy products have a chemical in it called casomorphines. Human milk has casomorphines. Dog milk, I'm assuming, has dog morphines. Cow's milk has casomorphines in it. What's the key word in there? Not caso, it's morphine. Morphine is what? A and you can get what to drugs? You can get addicted to drugs. So guess what? You're addicted to cheese. Wow. Because why milk? I can give up milk. I can't give up cheese. Milk has some case of morphines. And what do we do with cheese? We take the water out. Concentrate it down. You're getting hot. So it's not the cheese you're hooked on. It's the morphine that you're hooked on. Got it? So Lori was kind enough to make some uh, pesto tonight. Anybody have it so far? Amazing, isn't it? You don't get any. <laughs> so we grade a vegan Parmesan cheese right here. Okay? Not real cheese. How about that? Now this is made with soy. Okay, so it does have some soy in it. Uh, it has uh, rice flour, coconut oil, rice maltodextrin, rice flour, rice meal, uh, vegetable glycerin. Okay, so this has soy in it. They have soy free as well made with rice if you don't do soy. Pretty cool. Tastes fine? You'll find out in a second. It tastes really good. Okay? So if you want to impress your significant other, 
This recipe is in my book, which everybody should have a copy of. Why? I have a daughter. She can go to college. Someday. Okay, so everybody should have a copy of <laughs> But this recipe is in there. This is one of my favorites. Because growing up Italian, all, every recipe I ever had I saw, that, that I saw that had pesto had cheese in it. So I made it one day without the cheese. Tasted fine. If you want to add the cheese, you can add this or the rice. Okay? And they have no animal products in it. So, dairy products are not a good idea because cows are fed what? Steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers. Not a good thing. And the saturated fats and the casein and pumps together. Not, doesn't sound good anymore, does it? Okay? Sour cream, same thing. Butter, same thing. So if you're going to do butter, I recommend you don't. <laughs> There's something called, I don't have it here, Earth Balance. Earth Balance tastes just like butter. You'd never know the difference. They have soy free, they have made with olive oil, they have all different kinds. Um, I would suggest you do an Earth Balance. Okay, Lori's handing out the recipes. Okay. You know what we should do, Lori? It's an idea. We'll leave one, one ingredient out, so they have to do <laughs> Guess the ingredient. So dairy is not a good choice. And the nice part is there's substitutes for everything. Now, you like ice cream? Okay. I'm going to warn you right now, don't ever eat coconut ice cream. It tastes so good. <laughs> You'll never want to go back to regular ice cream. Not in your head, yes, 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 okay. It's scary how good it is. Even if you don't care about the nutritional factor, I believe coconut ice cream tastes way better than the, the cow's milk. Now, can I get gross again? You seem to like that part with the maggots, so I'll get a little gross. Okay? You know, weirdos. <laughs> Commercial milk, so depending on the study you read, about 40% of cows are injected with something called somatotrophic recombinant bovine growth hormone. Somatotrophic recombinant bovine growth hormone is identical in cows and humans. It's, it's growth factor, it makes you grow. Now, assuming you're not growing this way anymore, you eat it, you grow this way. So remember, we're not talking about calories here because calories don't count in this generation. They do count, but not like they used to. It used to be only calories to worry about. Now we got all these chemicals and parabens and uh, xenoestrogens. So it's a lot more than just calories. So the cows are injected with something like somatotrophic recombinant bovine growth hormone. Cause them to produce up to two to three times the amount of milk that a normal cow would. Ladies, remember breastfeeding? Remember how sore you were? Imagine two to three times. <laughs> so the udder is becoming gorged with milk and they actually rip and tear. Okay, so imagine this ladies happening to your udders, okay? <laughs> And they start to rip and tear, so then they get infected. So what do we give the cows if they have an infection? Antibiotics, so it gets into the milk. And every time you eat an animal product, that's a commercial animal product, you're giving yourself a little bit of antibiotics. That's why we create, I believe, we're creating superbugs. We're creating MRSA and other vi viruses, well, other bugs, I should say, that we can't fight with antibiotics anymore because they mutate them. So this is one reason that you're doing it to yourself every day. So the infection gets in there, we give them antibiotics, but the infection is there. And so pus forms and it bleeds a little bit. And so where's it going to go? Milk. It's in the milk. So the pus and the blood drip down into the milk. Now last guidelines I read is guidelines. Isn't that scary? There's a guideline of how much pus you can have in your milk? No more than 750,000 pus cells or blood cells in eight drops of milk. Drop, 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 eight drops. So imagine how much pus you're eating when you're having less milk. Same question till the end. Oh, okay. Okay? That will take the romance out of your dinner, won't it? Okay? So, that's why we're trying to show you that there are alternatives to this that are better for you, usually less expensive, and won't mess up your hormones because that somatotrophic recombinant bovine growth hormone gets into you and it starts messing with your hormones. Again, testosterone, strong muscles, estrogen, not so much. And so we're messing with the estrogen every time we're eating meats, every time we eat dairy products, every time you're using commercial perfumes, shampoos with parabens in it, air fresheners, candles. So if you're gonna do a candle, I recommend a soy candle or a beeswax candle with essential oils in it, not the commercials ones. Those air fresheners that you plug into the wall, if you want to get one, they have them back here. Get one and use the essential essential oils. Excuse me. Essential oils are a little more expensive, but they go so much further, so they're really not that much more expensive, and they won't mess with your hormones. Pretty cool. Okay. 
That's a good thing. So, we talk about dairy products. What's next on our list? Go ahead. Is organic milk um, okay? Organic milk's a little better, but it still has growth hormone in it because it makes the baby cow grow. But if it says anti-hormone? It still has the hormones. Oh, I mean, still. human milk produces hormones. Dogs produce hormones. It's still there. So if you want to do a milk substitute, yeah. rice milk, almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk. I'm insane over coconut milk. It's mm. so good. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's a good choice. Yes? I don't drink it, but raw milk. Same. Raw milk. You can't buy it in Georgia. It's illegal, so I can't even talk about it because I'm on tape. <laughs> okay. Almond milk is great, coconut milk is great, coconut milk has medium chain fatty acids which are actually good for you. Every cell in your body has a cell wall with a lipoprotein layer, lipo meaning fat, protein meaning protein, and this lipoprotein layer determines how much nutrients can get into the cell and how much waste products can get out. If you're eating cheap fats and bad proteins, guess what? Your cell walls are made of cheap fats and bad protein, you can't get the nutrients out, you can't pass the waste product, you can't get the nutrients in, you can't pass the waste products out, the cells become sick. So you're sick on a cellular level. You've got to remember what you put in your body is what your body's made up of. Your brain functions because of the food you put in there. Make sense? Kind of important stuff. Okay, so we think, well, I'm just going to have a treat. No, you're killing yourself. Okay? I look at, I go to schools and I watch kids. Oh, Johnny did well today. We're going to have cake. <laughs> What's next on our list? Coffee. Nothing has more synthetic pesticides than coffee. Except cigarettes, which I'm assuming you don't smoke. If you smoke, don't even listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> don't bother. So, if you smoke, quit. I don't care what it takes, quit. Spend your life fortune, quit. Okay, you need to get off the cigarettes. Okay? So, coffee has synthetic pesticides in it. Coffee is also an acid. When you put acid in your body, the body has to neutralize the acid. The body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. Calcium is necessary for your body to relax and go into the parasympathetic state, relaxation state. So if you're eating a lot of acid foods, which are what? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're sucking out the calcium from your bones and your muscles. Muscles can't relax. You can't go into parasympathetics. It goes the whole romance lecture. Follow? It's also diuretic, which means what? It makes you pee. Okay? And that's not fun for romance either. Excuse me. You know. <laughs> and it dehydrates you. And the body needs fluids to function normally. Function. Okay? When it comes to romance, we need circulation. We need blood flow. Otherwise, it don't work. Nothing works. Boys and girls, it doesn't work. So you need blood flow. If you're eating saturated fats, you're clogging up your arteries, can't get good blood flow. I'm amazed how many x-rays I take and I can see clogged arteries right in here. I don't know, probably... 20%, 50% of my patients sometimes. You can see the clogged, well, the clogged veins, it's called flubulins. And if I can see it on the x-ray, it's not just here, it's in the heart and the brain as well, and other organs. So the body can't work. And why is it there? You did it. Someone once said, forgive them, they know not what they do. Now you know. No more excuses. That's it. You didn't know you were going to get in trouble tonight, did you? No more excuses. Well, I'm just going to have a steak because it's nice. How about lobster? You're going to hate me for this one. Okay. There's a book written a long time ago. Moses wrote it. It's called Leviticus. And in Leviticus, I guess Moses had nothing to do. He says, let me write a book. It's a guideline. It's going to be a guide for you how to live your life. Okay? It's not really, it's not a religious base. It's just these are good guidelines. These are good rules to follow. And Moses said, don't eat pork and don't eat shellfish, right? Okay. Well, lobsters are shellfish. Why shouldn't you eat them? They live on the bottom and they eat all the stuff that settles on the bottom. Dead animals, fecal matter, poisons, toxins. And this is 3,000 years ago. A lot cleaner then than it is now. So what happens is, if you ever look at a lobster, lay it on its back. What else looks like that on its back? Cockroach. The lobsters and the cockroaches are cousins. First cousin. Right. <laughs> Right. So next time you want a lobster, I want you to flip them over. Look at this. It's like a roach on a half shell, right? And it's very high in cholesterol. Bad cholesterol. There's good and bad cholesterol. Cholesterol is necessary 
for normal function, especially of hormones. Guess what your hormones are made with? Cholesterol. So one of the things I find is people have high cholesterol and they take a statin drug. Statin drugs lower your cholesterol. Do they work? Yes, they do wonders. They're wonderful drugs if you want to lower your cholesterol. However, there's an enzyme in your liver that makes cholesterol. I just did a radio show on this a couple weeks ago. You, you eat whatever it is, goes into your liver, your liver breaks it down. And the liver says, all right, I need more cholesterol, less cholesterol. So it sends out low-density lipoproteins, which is more cholesterol, or high-density lipoproteins, which takes the cholesterol back to the liver and gets it broken down into bile and passes out. Pretty efficient system. Now, if you're straining your liver by eating alcohols, meat, sugars, dairies, coffee, soda, artificial sweeteners, the balance gets thrown off. So you start having high, low-density lipoproteins, high, bad cholesterol. So what do we do? We give you a pill to stop the enzyme from producing more cholesterol. It's a great idea. The same enzyme that produces cholesterol produces something called coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is necessary to get into the cells, into the mitochondria, and make muscles contract and give you energy. That's why so many people, when they take statin drugs, get tired. Light bulb. There you go. Oh, well that makes sense now. I never explained that to you, did they? See how easy it was? You got it. I did a radio show one time, a friend of mine called me up and he says, my girlfriend's a pharmacist. And she never heard that before. And then she went online and looked it up. And she said, oh my God, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the pharmacist didn't know. So I'm not a medical doctor. I can't tell you to take drugs or not take drugs. But I can tell you if it were me and I were taking statin drugs, wouldn't. But if I was taking statin drugs, I would be taking coenzyme Q10 as well. Because coenzyme Q10 will then put the, get the nourish the cells working again, get the mitochondria functioning. Pretty cool stuff. Do you stuff. suggest coenzyme Q10 to everyone? Do I suggest everyone? Uh, if it were me, that's my best advice. I would take coenzyme Q10 if I were taking statin drugs. When a patient comes into my office, we do several things. Number one, we check the nervous system, which we we'll get to in a second. Number two, we check their digestive system, which we're going to cover in a second, too. And then number three, we talk about their diet and nutrition. Because I don't know what you need, because you need something different than she needs, than what you need, than what you need. Everybody's different. And so people say, what should I take for? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're the world's foremost authority on this. I don't know. I don't know what you need. I know what I would do, but I don't know what you would do. And so I do an analysis with you, and then I can give you a more educated guess or uh, recommendation as to what to do. Follow? The other option is get the liver function normally, so the balance of LDLs, VLDLs, and HDLs balance out. That's another option. That's fixing the cause, not treating the symptom. Got it? So once you get that balanced out, you can stop the step. Most people can. But I, my concern is I don't want your cholesterol getting too low. That's where I was going off on this tangent. Because you need cholesterol to produce your hormones. And so not only do you get tired, if you don't have enough cholesterol, you can't produce the hormones. Then we put you on hormone replacement therapy. Got it? Okay. So coffee's not a good thing. It's a diuretic. Drain your body of fluids. You need fluids because fluids make your blood flow. Okay? And it can cause vasoconstriction. What's next on my list? Cheesecake. We kind of covered that a little bit. Well, let's talk about sugar in there. Okay? Now, cheesecake's made with sugar. Sugar's bad. In the 70s, we came out with something called high fructose corn syrup. <coughs> high fructose corn syrup is worse. <coughs> if I fed you 120 calories of sugar, one calorie gets stored as fat. If I fed you 120 calories of high fructose corn syrup, same amount of calories. Remember calories? Remember those bad guys? 42 gets stored as fat. It's essentially 40, wow, 42 times more fattening than sugar. Now, the problem is this. If you put a lot of fructose in the body, your body can only process about 25 grams of fructose a day, the fructose gets into your liver and has to be broken down. One of the metabolites or breakdown products of high fructose corn syrup or fructose is uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. I'm a chiropractor. People come to me with pain, gout. But all joints, not just the big toe, but all joints get it, but mainly big toe. Uric acid prevents your body from producing something called coenzyme Q10. There you go. No, you're, I'm sorry, not kill enzyme Q10, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is vasodilator. It opens up your blood vessels. What did we just talk about? You need good blood flow, right? Romance. 
Okay? <coughs> so if you're doing a lot of high fructose corn syrup, it converts to uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide production prevents normal, normal blood, blood circulation and vasodilation everywhere. Brain, organs, other parts, you're not getting the blood supply. Got it? So now in my office, I see people coming in, men and women, in their 20s. My staff laughs. Not laugh, they laugh sadly. They go, oh my god, another guy with dysfunction. Another woman with dysfunction, romantically. And it's rampant. It's not just an 80-year-old guys anymore. It's 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds. It's crazy. And one of the problems is the high fructose corn syrup, converting to uric acid, converting from any nitric oxide production. So now you could take something called arginine. Arginine opens up your blood vessels, produces, uh, produces nitric oxide. It's a problem. If you have a herpes virus anywhere in your body, okay, one in three uh, active adults in Atlanta do have genital herpes, by the way. There's a scary number for you. Okay? But mm. well, they have herpes, I, I think with genital in the study. So, one in three have it. Arginine stimulates herpes outbreaks. Huh. Well, we're talking about romance. Isn't it a protein? It's a protein, right? What? It's amino acid, yes. Amino acid, protein, yeah. right. Okay? And what happens is, it's funny, especially around spring training, in spring and summer, people come to my, me and say, Doc, I had an outbreak at the Braves game. Oh. Now, I don't know what you were doing at the Braves game. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the Braves that are giving you the herpes, it's the peanuts, which are high in arginine, which suppresses the lysine, which fights with the lysine, lysine suppresses it, arginine stimulates the outbreaks. Isn't this so cool? I should do it with notes one day, I'll really get it right. <laughs> so pretty neat stuff. So, oh. There you go. So, there you go. So, there's another fun fact for you, especially when we're talking about romance. Okay? No peanuts. Now, peanuts will open up your blood vessels and it'll work for that, but it can cause a problem elsewhere. Follow? So, what's next? Bread and butter. All right. Bread's made with what? Wheat. 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 There you go. It was so cool. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I guess, I was talking about gluten. Everybody, what the heck is gluten? Now it's cool. Okay? So the things I'm teaching you today are going to be cool in about 20 years. You are so ahead of the curve to being cool. I remember talking about margarine being number one cause of heart disease 25 years ago. Suddenly, what? Hydrogenated oil is the number one cause of heart disease. What's margarine made with? That's right. Okay? So trust me, I'm right on all this stuff. So bread and butter, bread is high in gluten. Gluten is a protein, okay? There's a, there's a, there's a, a bunch of pro, uh, proteins, they're called lectins. Gluten is one of them. When gluten gets into your stomach, the acid has to break it down to something called amino acids, as it does with all proteins. But we don't break down gluten very easily. It's, not, it's a tough protein to break down. So the gluten passes into our small intestine where it irritates the small intestine and causes an inflammatory reaction. Now that inflammatory reaction can cause your whole body to go into inflammatory reaction. And every disease known to humanity has an inflammatory component. Everything. And you're making it worse by causing inflammation. And if the inflammatory reactions become bad enough, the bowels can really cause serious problems. Now, I believe that everyone has some gluten sensitivity. Some people, like celiacs, can die from gluten. Okay? So I'm going to suggest that we go gluten-free. And that's why when Laurie served you the artichoke dip tonight, that was no animal products. How does that